Good evening all. Welcome to Inter Society weekly webinar series. To enlighten us today on artificial intelligence tech startups, we have Dr. Anthony Satidas, managing partner, CEO, co-founder, innovation incubator group of companies. I am Elizabeth George, MC for today. As we are about to begin, I kindly request all the participants to turn off your audio and video. Participants are requested to type in the questions in the chat box, which will be taken for discussion at the end of the session. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention. Now I invite Ajina Kari to give welcome address. Elizabeth, I don't think Ajina has come. You can take over. Oh, okay. Inter Society Weekly Webinar Series is jointly organized by IEEE Kerala Session, the Institution of Engineers, Computer Society of India Trivandrum Chapter, PMI, Internet Society Trivandrum, VMFT, LMAG, IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology Kerala Chapter, EMBS. On behalf of all these chapters, I invite all the eminent personalities present here uh, for the webinar series. I formally welcome Dr. Anthony Satidas, who is the CEO, co-founder and innovation inhibitor group of companies. I also welcome Shandi Ma'am, Harindra Lal Sar, and all other personalities who is present over here. So I request Dr. Shandi Devindran, Motorola Solutions, Singapore Private Limited, to introduce the speaker. Uh, hi, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome Anthony Satidas, my classmate from Electrical Engineering 84 of College of Engineering Trivandrum. Uh, we in the E84 uh, batch are very proud of what Anthony is doing. Um, I just want to introduce Anthony personally to you. Uh, he was uh, uh, my classmate and he was one of the very few boys I spoke to, I remember when I was in college. He was a very outgoing person, always bubbly, full of ideas. And it was always fun to be around when he was there. Son will attest to it. <laughs> so uh, when we left, uh, Anthony was... Uh, uh, always interested in going to the States, I remember, and uh, he did go there. And uh, I remember he, he uh, went um, somewhere else first, and then he said he is in the States. And then we found out he's in Hyderabad, and then he said he is in one of the States. But he did reach the States eventually, and uh, we are very happy to see that he's bringing something of all that he learned back to his uh, hometown which is what we, we all want to do, hope to do. Um, when, uh, when, when, uh, when I um, talked to Anthony over the years, one of my few classmates I kept in touch with, uh, he was always uh, very well grounded uh, in his knowledge. And I'm sure he brings that to the tech startups here. Uh, he's also a very resilient uh, individual and that is, uh, probably one of the qualities that all startups need as well. So with that, I'm eagerly waiting to listen to Anthony's speech. Anthony, please go ahead. Hey, thank you, Shandi, for the kind words. Um, it is kind of exciting to be here. <laughs> I feel almost like homecoming, uh, many familiar faces. Uh, just to qualify, I'm not a doctor, just to be clear, but um, um, I I'm really excited and I think, um, uh, Harindrala, I mean, we call him Annan. Uh, it's an amazing thing you're doing here in bringing together different associations and societies um, to a common platform, right? And to share, you know, things we have learned over the last few decades. Uh, I think that is very exciting. So when I thought about what to share, uh, obviously, I did attend a few of these sessions before, even like Shandi's session, Ambiga, and a few others. Uh, there are a lot of eminent personalities who have been sharing their knowledge already here. And so I thought, you know, maybe um, 
and, and as I know that there are people who have been sharing about startups and uh, there are other presenters coming up later on too in that regard. So I thought maybe, you know, given what is happening in the industry around artificial intelligence and some of our, my experiences um, around startups, maybe that is a topic uh, to share. So with that in mind, um, there are really three things I would like to focus on. Um, one is all about, you know, many people, uh, some of my classmates, uh, you know, juniors, others, you know, friends of, um, uh, you know, family, et cetera, uh, often they come and ask me the question, hey, my son is talking about startup, you know, what do I do? Or I was in the Gulf for like, you know, 30 years, I'm retiring and coming home, what should I do, right? So I know in this audience, there are probably many entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, um, and I'm sure you've been sharing your um, uh, wisdom to many, um, uh, but I thought it is important to touch on that briefly. And then talk a bit more around the value, you know, how do you make it real, right? When you think about artificial intelligence. So what is it really, why it matters? And a whole bunch of use cases you can think about, right? Uh, where many companies have already been successful and, uh, and we will talk more about that. And then how do you get started? So I would think that I would like to spend probably half an hour through all of these. Um, spending most of the time on the topic, you know, item two, and then uh, really, you know, open it up for questions and make it interactive, right? After spending this half an hour, All right? So when people think about startups and, uh, you know, there is always that question, what is the purpose, right? Is it my, that my kid is getting, uh, is graduated, is trying to figure out what to do versus I'm getting retired and I would like to get started on something, or I'm already an entrepreneur in certain domain, and I'd like to see uh, what can be leveraged, uh, what is emerging out there. So there are different reasons why you would think about it, right? So, but then the purpose is important, but then pretty soon the question is gonna be, what is the role you wanna play, right? Are you uh, looking at it as a founder with some seed capital, or you just want to look for investment opportunities in this space. Uh, maybe you're a doctor, or maybe you're in the construction industry or manufacturing or in retail, whatever the case might be, uh, but you have subject matter expertise in a topic. Uh, and if so, you could be uh, really driving uh, that innovation for that startup. Uh, but you know, there are others who are eminent mathematicians or been doing AI in the industry. And so you would want to get hands-on too, or you would just be a passive investor, right? And, and then the other thing is of course around, you know, uh, which market you want to uh, get into uh, from a country perspective. And whether it is because you just have an idea, you want to just incubate it and test it out and prove it first, or you've already done that and you want to accelerate it to a market, right? So that becomes important. And then the last but not least uh, would be then the industry domain, right? So maybe because you have acres of land that you've not been cultivating and, and or uh, friends who have been exploring agrotech or when you look at the success of like, you know, Baiju's or other companies out there in education and a state like Kerala, uh, you know, that being very, very important um, then, you know, what about edutech? or you know, various aspects of healthcare. And as we all know, Kerala is number one in India for healthcare. So what is the innovation you can bring around there? Or maybe it is in the area of smart cities or construction. I think, you know, Shandi, I believe I talked about public safety and, you know, how AI can be applied there. Or like the conversation Ambika had in space where, oh my gosh, like I remember when I started doing AI first, probably around 30 years back, uh, was uh, initially in aerospace because there was a lot of data and insights around control systems available for us to actually apply and show and make a difference. Or maybe it is in fashion, right? And we have a startup actually doing that. So the key point here is that, you know, the purpose is important. What role you want to play will be very important. 
And then as you can imagine, which industry and the market you want to incubate or accelerate, or accelerate it becomes important. So given that, then when we think about making it real, the first question immediately is, gee, you know, there's always this debate, what really is intelligence, right? Because we talk of artificial intelligence uh, because you're short of intelligence or what, right? Um, so in that regard, I think uh, two points, right? One, there are definitions out there, right? In, and one of the common definition is about our ability to perceive or infer information and to retain it as knowledge, which you can apply it, you know, uh, for adaptive behavior, right? And, and there is always a context and environment around which you do that. But increasingly there is a recognition that when you think of intelligence, it is not just one thing, right? And uh, one of the latest uh, articles that came out, I think it was in uh, CNBC, they, uh, someone was sharing this view about four, I mean, eight aspects of intelligence that, that is important. And you will see this actually, when you look at success stories in applying AI, you will see that maybe it is using robotics, uh, maybe it is in natural language processing, right? Maybe it is in computer vision, in auto autonomous driving vehicles, or it is Alexa, right? Or, uh, or Cortana or Siri. So there is definitely, um, uh, reflection of that in terms of how the industry is progressing. But the key takeaway, in my opinion, is that it is important to understand that there are various dimensions to it that you should appreciate. And so when we have that as a definition of intelligence, then the question is, what is artificial intelligence, right? So again, there are different definitions whenever we get together to talk about uh, whether it is the mind or the body, you know, 30 years back when we were helping a university in, in the US establish a cognitive science department, we used to do this uh, seminar series uh, once every two weeks. And it was quite interesting because the people who came in there were mathematicians, computer scientists, philosophers, psychologists, neuroscientists, uh, uh, medical doctors. They were all coming together uh, to understand uh, and appreciate the brain and our mind and um, how we could mimic some aspect of it and uh, provide value. Uh, but increasingly our recognition is that uh, when we think of AI, sure it is getting a computer to do things which when done by us are said to involve intelligence, but there is a reality check that just going and taking an algorithm and saying, hey, I got AI alone doesn't cut it. You want to appreciate and understand the mind and the body aspects of it, because there is always some R and D that is going to happen. So, in that context, when you think about the mind, um, there are again models out there, right? In terms of how we think uh, from a conscious uh, uh, situation uh, all the way to a pre-conscious and subconscious mind, and then what we do around that. Similarly, when you think about the brain. Uh, and the gut and the spine, they all need to come together. As you know, uh, uh, you know, when we were studying uh, AI, it was more about the brain, but increasingly there is recognition about the gut and the microbiomes that needs to come together, right? Um, so there is a lot of appreciation of how our human systems and human intelligence evolves and works, uh, which needs to be appreciated. And and then we come to the machine, right? This is where we have various um, breakthroughs and letdowns and you know challenges of various technologies that has evolved, right? And if you look at this journey, at the highest level, you would see some kind of a sinusoidal wave around how the connectionist movement with neurons and neural networks were very popular. And then this, what we call the sub-symbolic kind of space. And then the symbolic space around you know, fuzzy systems and logic um, and, and you know, those kind of things were, you know, were emerged and that is where like expert systems emerged. I, I was fortunate to start AI, uh, I was introduced to that in, in I would say in 1990 uh, when I started my grad school here in the US, but then uh, had a chance to work with many of the leaders in this field, uh, but not just those who like a Hinton who or you know, verbose who was you know very active in neural net, but also like the Lord B. Zade, who was the founder of Fuzzy Logic, and people who had 
invented and innovated in genetic algorithms and people who are into integer programming and the mathematicians and you know people who have been looking at the chaos theory and decision sciences uh, because these were all uh, important elements that needed to come together. So given that, um, then the next question is, you know, sure, you know, uh, we understand about intelligence, we understand what AI is about and what are different, uh, you know, technologies that comes together to provide that artificial intelligence, then, okay, so why should we care about it, right? So one thing for sure is that, and you know, there is a increasing consensus about it that how we do and make decisions will never be the same again because of how we can leverage AI. So there are a lot of numbers out there in terms of market and you know size and growth. They are in the order of trillions of dollars. So at some point, I start counting. Uh, I'm pointing you to data to available. There is also a hype cycle for AI that Gartner, one of the industry, you know, for, uh, popular industry analysts, those guys publish, that also gives you a window into kind of, you know, what is emerging, uh, you know, uh, the typical thing about the hype cycle where there is always that path where new innovations will ride and people will bet if you want to take risk. But then some of them, as you come down, the trough of disillusionment uh, will fade away or get the reality check of what will really work or not. And then it stabilizes, right, into this plateau of productivity. So there is a pipeline of a lot of innovation around AI out there. Uh, again, that will be mindful. You got to be mindful about and leverage depending upon your risk-taking uh, uh, you know, uh, appetite. And, and, and then you know, leverage it. So the other reason why AI matters is there is actually a lot of data out there around, uh, again, market-wise of what could be the impact, right? So this is an example of that, the 21 technologies for 2021, it says that AI impact is around 390 billion, but they also say that AI will enable 80% of this emerging tech like this year. So that is like a very big statement and that is uh, becoming real. And if you look at the inset on the bottom right, this is specifically in terms of the India market, right? Where already, you know, there is amazing um, attraction and investments happening and a lot more to happen. So the other reason why I think, when you think about why AI matters specifically to India is definitely, you know, when you look at the numbers you're talking of adding like a trillion dollars uh, uh, in the you know Indian economy by 2035. That is one of the predictions. And uh, you know Stanford University they publish this uh, what they call an AI index score, um, and they published it recently like in 2021, uh, whatever uh, based on the data from 2020. And this is uh, positioning India in a very favorable way. And similarly, NASCOM also had a, a bunch of publications about the opportunity for AI in India, uh, which is, you know, which again are, you know, big numbers and pretty exciting. And, and then, you know, there is a related question, is India really serious about AI, right? So, but, and you may find this, and many of you might be already knowing about it, but there is a national strategy for AI that was published in 2018. There are, you know, a lot of activities around by Nitin Ayog around this. And then many of the uh, multinational companies have been uh, doing a lot of innovation and so have been a lot of domestic startups and, you know, the DRDUs uh, in India and other educational institutions have been very, very active in that regard. So when you think about AI and think about the problems it can solve, I think there are various aspects of that, right? Um, whether it is a recommendation problem, uh, whether, uh, uh, you know, based on uh, like an Amazon kind of an experience, whether it is in being able to classify, whether it is documents or people or items, whether it is in terms of automation, like robotic process automation, or other ways to automate uh, our business processes, um, the prediction problems, uh, different ways to do learning, computer vision associated problems, 
being able to use natural language processing uh, to provide a Q&A uh, kind of interactions like using a chatbot or a virtual agent, um, summarization kind of problems, um, and then of course, speech related things, uh, decision making related things, uh, control problems. These are all areas where a lot of success have happened already in using AI. Now, what is also emerging, and not because it is not there already, but there is a lot of excitement increasingly, is around how I can embed AI in a device um, at the edge or you know, uh, within systems, whether it is in nanotechnology or otherwise. There is the emerging field of how you would use AI uh, to do what is called AI ops, which is like you know, when you do operations leveraging AI uh, uh, so that you can predict uh, whether it is failure or issues that may come up and take corrective action um, according, you know, uh, in a timely manner. And that gets into what we call situational awareness um, and ML ops, which is like machine learning ops. So this gets into, as you build these AI models, there's a lot of them that is, will be, that'll be out there. You got to manage all that. So there is a lot of focus around that. And then, you know, given to solve a problem, you will see soon in my presentation, there are so many algorithms and innovations that is happening worldwide. So there is this uh, uh, field of what we call auto machine learning that gets into, can the system go figure out for a given problem, apply a whole bunch of algorithms and tell me which one is best, right? So these are some of the you know, newer innovations out there. So given all that, when we think of use cases, um, again, you know, so many ways to talk about it and explore it. I can spend you know, ages you know, discussing this, but in our experience, um, at least these five stands out, right? One is all around decision support. So whether it is in figuring out the price of something or managing my inventory or figuring out which advertisement to push when I do the marketing campaign, or in doing risk mitigation, or maybe it is in figuring out which one to select and, 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 and recommend. Um, maybe it is around what to purchase. Uh, it could be around clinical decision support where a doctor, maybe in the rural area, uh, that you don't have access to a specialist. So can I just say, use AI system to give me a, a kind of a quick recommendation on what could be the problem reading a X-ray image or a, um, uh, or a CT scan or whatever. And, and, and so, and already there are companies doing that in India, right, uh, successfully. Um, and similarly, if you look at the pharmaceutical world, uh, what we call real world evidence. So looking at, you know, given a drug, it is in market, and, but based on how people are using it and the side effects and maybe new ideas that may come out of it, um, uh, how do we take all that data and generate insights from that? So, so decision support is a pretty big area, but then a lot of interesting successes, a lot of challenges too, uh, but a uh, whole bunch of use cases uh, out there around that. The second thing, uh, one is around radical personalization. So this gets into, based on my data, how much can the system know about me so it can build the right context so that it can give me the, uh, it can personalize whether it is a recommendation or, a, 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 like a best fit offer or the, the question the system will ask me or should not ask me, like in conversational AI, for example, or figuring out based on my sentiment and behavior, um, et cetera, uh, how, to, uh, you know, uh, how to understand more about me so you can interact appropriately. So again, a lot of innovation happening there, right? The third area is on productivity. So this gets into, gee, there are mundane tasks we do and uh, which I could automate and gee, you know, that is what computers do for you. But then when you think about, for example, processes you execute where uh, today I have to log into five different systems, go search and pull out some document and then read the document, pull two, three data points from there, load it into a spreadsheet and then uh, do some compute with that and then submit it somewhere else, right? Uh, uh, that is what robotic process automation is all about, right? But then there is also the robots, right? Whether it is the robot that is doing work in the industry versus helping me because my mom is alone at home. That is like the Android Kunjapin kind of storyline, right? Um, 
uh, those are all getting real. Um, and then in terms of a broader area where you would make impact is when you combine AI with other technologies, uh, whether it is around the internet of things. So you can get data from a variety of devices and then you apply your AI algorithm to predict or make suggestions or changes or control something. Um, maybe it is because I'm able to put the AI, you know, to use the NVIDIA or like an Intel chip and put the AI uh, power right in my iPhone or gee, maybe it is into the nanotechnology uh, uh, small camera that I, uh, that during a health, you know, kind of a diagnosis that I would swallow and, and it will figure out what is happening uh, into, in my intestine, right? Uh, those kind of things. Um, and also increasingly you will see, right? Like companies like Unity, for example, AI is like a very core capability within that in how you would build games. And whether it is for uh, just general games or serious gaming, like, you know, prediction markets, for example, where you're, you're kind of using or fantasy football, right? Or fantasy cricket for that matter where you're using people's uh, intelligence uh, globally uh, to then get insights that can be applied, right, uh, in the real world. And then gamification strategies, uh, um, combining AI with augmented reality. Uh, these are all things out there today. And, and then situational awareness, right? I think Shandi in her presentation had talked some about this, where when you think about a pattern you are familiar with, but if there is a deviation to the pattern, then the system being able to predict that and alert you, and not just saying, hey, you got to do something, tell you why I'm alerting you. And here are three potential things you can do about it. So variety of use cases. And then there are a few examples I will go to uh, specifically in healthcare, agrotech um, uh, and education uh, that might be useful. And here is another way also. So Anand, uh, one of our stars, uh, he, uh, he has spent you know, decades in AI and he had presented uh, about, again, various ways of using AI in different domains like healthcare, safety, environment, et cetera. Uh, again, you know, a lot of use cases. So the other way to think about it is also, you know what, where is money going, right? So this is an interesting uh, insight I thought uh, that was published recently, when you look at comparing like 2090 to 2020, a lot of money has gone into drug discovery, cancer, you know, that domain and healthcare. Similarly, a lot more money uh, compared to 2019 has gone into edutech, right? Um, and, then, uh, and then of course, you know, in many areas, including core technology around, you know, speech recognition, computer interaction, dialogue, et cetera. So when you look at AI uh, in healthcare around the continuum of care, NASCOM had published a very interesting uh, you know, article that talks about three areas where there could be huge impact. One is around enhancing quality, um, then about improving accessibility and then reducing costs. So the whole bunch of use cases around that, right? That can be leveraged. But if you're interested in healthcare, one book I would strongly recommend you buy and read is Deep Medicine. So Dr. Eric Topol, he, he uh, is a medical doctor who did this work. And the, uh, I think uh, the introduction is given by Dr. Abraham Varghese uh, from Stanford. And this tells you the story where healthcare is going, leveraging AI. It's a phenomenal book. And in EduTech, I think there are a whole bunch of opportunities. I, I saw this recent interview uh, with uh, Rabindran, right, the founder of Byju's, where he talks about student to student learning and engagement, uh, which is so critical. And I think it is a very uh, interesting opportunity to apply AI. So whether it is around figure out, figuring out for a given uh, student, which pedagogy will, be, will make sense or helping them navigate through learning pathways, depending upon how fast or slow or different modalities they learn, these are all opportunities in education. And agrotech is quite exciting. And we have actually one of the startup, uh, Agdi, which, which is kind of uh, hitting headlines now, where they spend a lot of time looking at how to go figure out uh, the quality of the seeds um, using computer vision and associated technologies. 
And here is another one in fashion tech, whether it is around, you know, uh, people trying on virtually, you know, clothing, uh, getting recommendations based on an occasion, what dress you need to wear, um, uh, leveraging, you know, data from across, a, you know, uh, from a different sources, and then using that to improve the recommendation. Uh, these are all happening right now. So having said all of this, you know, there are so many uh, use cases where you can apply. Uh, and uh, now you say, okay, I have an idea. What should I be thinking about, right? Now, as a businessman or someone, you know, uh, there is already, you know, standard things out there about what we say, the who, the what, the why, when, and how, uh, what you got to figure out before you start a business, right? That is like, you know, one-on-one, right? But when you think about using AI, but there is always these some additional questions you want to think about, right? Uh, so what problem is AI going to solve, right? Um, is it an open challenge versus you see a long hanging fruit where you can, it's a proven thing, but you can apply it in this domain. Nobody has applied it before, right? Uh, very easy, right? Let's just go get it done. Then, and then there is always a question, do you have a solid business case? Uh, what is the agile process you would use to build the software? Often you got to factor in that there might be still some unknowns and doing R and D in AI, be prepared for it, right? It may take you a little, uh, you know, uh, some time. So there is always a strategy where you apply a known algorithm first and start seeing some sense of the data and results before you start doing R and D on figuring out and fine tuning your algorithms. Uh, and then there is that question of, do you have the right talent mix, right? And uh, where is the data coming from? So many of the algorithms uh, in, in what we call supervised learning algorithms requires data and you, it requires labeled data. Um, and the quality of the data and all those things needs to be addressed, right? And then there's also that question of, gee, okay, I came up with an algorithm, how good it is. So what is exciting is that there are some amazing benchmarks out there right now. I remember when I started doing AI, like, you know, in the early 1990s, uh, we didn't have any of those, right? We were kind of figuring things out and actually uh, setting up benchmarks ourselves. But to where today, there is some amazing uh, you know, information available and you can use those benchmarks and test drive your solutions and, and, and really figure out right uh, 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 where to improve. And then there are the usual questions, right? You know, who has, do you have the domain knowledge? Do you have experts in your board uh, or advisors that can work, you can work with? Do you have sponsor users? If you are going healthcare, can you get like a hospital in Kerala or wherever to be the uh, sponsor user so you can pilot it there. Uh, what kind of partnerships do you need, uh, whether it is a digital university or you know, other educational institutions, or maybe it is the banks, maybe it is uh, the, uh, you know, some other company in the, indus in the industry. How soon can you have a minimum viable product ready, right? And of course, the, the you know, kind of the guideline of, you want to fail fast, right? If you're spending, you know, putting money here and, and or pivot uh, to uh, and navigate to a successful path um, if that is what is needed, right? So there are a bunch of approaches available, right? And I'm gonna just flash it by you. Each of these topics takes days and weeks to cover, right? But when you think about AI toolkit, there are different types of algorithms and a lot of innovations out there, right? Uh, that you can apply. So whether it is using deep learning or recurrent neural networks or you know reinforcement learning or GANs or fuzzy logic or simulated annealing or uh, genetic algorithms, these, these all will come together often to solve a problem. And talking of benchmarks, there are a few out there, right? One is called the super glue. What is crazy here is this is on NLP. And what you can see here is the super glue human baseline is like 89.8% .8 score. And already you have like Microsoft's uh, Deberta, Deberta, as well as uh, this T5 from Google that has been enhanced by this guy, uh, uh, Zuri Wang, that has outscored that. So that is how the innovation is going, right? And you can see Facebook's AI is down here right now. And similarly, there are others like, you know, Stanford has this thing called Squad, uh, which is a, a set of uh, Q and A uh, that you would use to test out your algorithm specifically in NLP, but around the question and answers, right? Uh, again, in figuring out uh, where you stand versus other innovations. 
Another one is ML Commons. So these guys have put together like a very large suite and there is like, they publish the results, right? There are around 1200 results out there of leading machine learning inference systems. And they also have this mobile performance app that very specifically applies uh, uh, benchmarks around your mobile-based, you know, uh, device-based innovation. And then there are other toolkits like this uh, uh, benchmark. Uh, uh, they call AI benchmark. They have this uh, 46 different computer vision tests you would perform, right? And you can download the benchmark and try it, and then calibrate where you land with your algorithm. So a whole bunch of things. And you know the other thing is all about the data, right? So often the challenge is that uh, you don't know where, where I'm gonna get the data. If you're in healthcare in the US market, it is like near to impossible to get approval to use data from hospital systems. But what is the good news here, right? There are strategies to work around it. Maybe it is in getting de-identified data. Now, an organization called MITRE Corporation is a federal organization, federal funded organization. They came up with a software called Cynthia, which can generate synthetic data. So for example, I live in Boston, Massachusetts. They have 1 million patient records of synthetic data, which represents a community of people living in Boston, but it's not really their data. And then there are strategies around self-supervised learning, few short learning, et cetera, that you can use, right? To overcome this uh, data uh, barrier. And then the other part is what kind of learning strategies you would use. Again, a whole bunch of things available. When you start on your journey, you will pick and choose from those and make decisions. And then there's always a question, gee, how do I measure, right? How, you know, uh, is it working? So again, there are a lot of guidelines out there, whether it's around accuracy, precision, recall, false positives, uh, ROC, so uh, uh, things like that, right? That you can apply for that. And then there is a question of how do I get the right talent? Again, different roles of people, that becomes important. Someone who understands strategy, uh, someone who understands the algorithms, someone who understands the tools, uh, who understands the data, and then of course the infrastructure. And then, gee, okay, that is all great, but where do I go get funding from, right? Again, you know, what is exciting is that uh, there's an India government site where they publish various uh, uh, VC firms and others who are investing in AI-focused innovation. So to conclude, right, uh, uh, I would say three takeaways. One is all about uh, when you think about making a decision whether to start up or not, is it a for-profit thing versus a social entrepreneurship? You gotta be thinking about what your role is, why are you doing it? Definitely, I think this is the time to act. And then to make it real, there is always this reality check that decision-making will never be the same again. A lot of it is because of the, because of the innovation happening in AI. So it is really a matter of finding a sweet spot and where you have knowledge in a given domain and then you know investing there. And then in getting started, definitely spend time on your business case. Uh, remember AI projects are not your typical projects, whether it's in construction or software or whatever. There are some nuances to it you have to be mindful about and you would rather fail fast or pivot. That is very important. So with that, let me stop and open it up for questions. Thank you, sir. So there are many questions in the chat box. I will just read out to them. What is it that really excites you about AI? It's from Shanti, ma'am. So I think, <laughs> two, three, great question, Shanti. So I think the first thing is, uh, it always gives me a reality check in knowing how little I know about it. Right? That has been a reality check always. But the other thing is definitely, I feel that we can actually make a difference in a, in a variety of dimensions. In, and you know, some of the domains I've been spending a lot of time is for example, in healthcare. And I can see impact happening. We are seeing FDA that has approved almost 100 devices they call, uh, which is actually software algorithms using AI. So that is the level of innovation uh, it is happening in the, in the industry. And I think you can make a very big global impact. Yeah. Uh, next question, five AI cases were shown in the PPT. So there must be something you commonly use, something that matures early in one area that can be transferred to another area quickly for faster innovation. So what is that? 
Absolutely. And I don't think there is a one answer to it. Uh, you're right. There is always going to be opportunities. We have seen in the past where like deep learning, when it was initially applied in a particular domain, like, you know, computer vision, now people are applying it in NLP and variety of other domains, right? And then applying, you know, where there were, I mean, initially success in say some aspect of like image recognition um, in, 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 in studying X-ray images. Now it is being applied in CT scans and MRIs and then, you know, anatomy, uh, you know, uh, uh, results imaging and then applying it to other domains like, gee, you know, look at agri-tech, agri right? In doing a seed classification and uh, recognizing which seeds are bad. Okay, so which case has been successful in Indian economy and why? Whole bunch. So if you if you think about just this, what I said, right? The healthcare. Uh, so there is a company, Cure.ai. The founder is a guy from Kerala, a Prashant Warrior, right? They made some amazing uh, inroads into applying AI in in helping doctors diagnose effectively. Uh, tuberculosis and a variety of other diseases. And I believe they, they did some uh, piloting in Kerala and I think in the Akshaya centers and now they've gone you know, global now. They've been funded by a bunch of venture, venture capital companies in the US. Um, that is just one example, right? There are hundreds of companies who have been successful in, uh, in uh, healthcare, in e-commerce, uh, we, have a, we have a bunch of startups who have been, you know, getting a lot of traction, um, like whether it is like, you know, agri-tech, agri -tech, for example, uh, and fintech for sure, right? And then there are some companies in core technology areas too, like for example, um, in Chatbot, there is a company in Cochin uh, who has been very successful. The founders are based in San Francisco now, and they are delivering this solution to many banks, um, you know, like that. Yeah. yeah, so moving to the next question. In airports, are we using AI for identifying threats? Hey, ACK is here, right? <laughs> he should answer that, I think. Uh, but I, I, heard, I know... That, that, is, that is his question. Yeah, that is his question. Yeah. ACK, you want to answer? Yeah, actually, uh, actually, we are using uh, two types of artificial intelligence in the airport. One is uh, mainly for identifying the threats. Uh, like uh, through the uh, CCTV uh, system, which has been um, a suspected uh, suspected possible movement or suspected baggage somewhere identified, I mean, laying there, or that is to be detected in time and that has to be removed from that spot. That is one. And uh, artificial machine learning also, machine intelligence also we are using, especially for uh, the uh, CT based uh, CT scanning machines, where the the first level detection is done by the machine, where they, if it's suppose a threat or something like that. That is uh, mainly software based, but with the with the hardware which is been detecting, and that will be interpreted and then uh, identifying as a threat or not. These are the two types presently we are using, but there are uh, some other uh, we in office uh, in business intelligence and all that uh, that also have some applications. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You know, yeah, moving. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Anjani, sir. Okay, next question is, is there a big business opportunity around data annotation in India, like the call center business? I believe so. And I think NASCOM published a huge article about it, right? There is a phenomenal opportunity, right? Because without label data, it is getting, it, it is not easy at all in many of the problems you're trying to solve. Now, uh, people have been trying to innovate around it. Like I talked about synthetic data, for example, um, but And then other companies, like um, there is a company based here in Boston, actually, those guys have taken the strategy where they offer pathologists some incentive in coming and looking at the image and telling them, okay, this image means this disease, right? Um, so that kind of tagging. But, and I think there's a huge opportunity, even if you pick a domain like that, imagine uh, the doctors in Kerala, right? What if they are incentive to uh, provide that annotation? That'll be huge, I think. Yeah. And uh, how close to creativity can we get through AI? <laughs> Good question. I, I don't know, there is increasing talk about, you know, like the GPTs and, you know, some of these newer algorithms, 
that is uh, coming up with new things. Uh, but I don't know, it, it is tricky, I think. It is, it's not an easy question to answer uh, because creativity uh, on one hand, we as humans, we believe that is special for us uh, but based on our definition of creativity. But as you can imagine, right? Like the same way they talk about how airplanes fly, it may not at all be how, like how the birds fly, but it still flies, right? Uh, so you may find, I think, AI systems uh, may be creative, but in a different way. Would it have intentionality? Would it have emotions? You know, those are all debates going on, right? <laughs> but then they also say that if all my experiences are loaded into a system and help AI system represent that, then isn't that me, my digital twin, right? And if so, even if I die, can, can I live? So <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, but systems can be creative in a narrow sense, I think, but in a broader human sense, probably AI is still as mature as a three-year-old, I think. Yeah. And uh, any successful application of AI in media industry in India? Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure it is there. Uh, but I don't know specifics about in media. I know here in the U.S. there is a lot going on in the media industry um, in, if nothing else, figuring out fake news <laughs> as well as in looking at trends. Uh, there is a lot. And then also in social media analysis and prediction and insertion strategies. And then when you get to marketing, a lot of things going on, right? Uh, but I'm not familiar with some a specific success story in India. Okay, so, yeah. If uh, if if there is any application of AI for mentally disabled child, uh, can you share it? I think there is a lot going on. What we call uh, a differently abled child, right? Um, uh, which is an important distinction, I think. Um, I, I think in very, very specific areas, where, for example, autism, I think there's been a lot of uh, breakthroughs there. Um, then if people have, um, you know, like, uh, what do you say that, uh, challenges in walking or movements, right? Uh, there is some very innovative technology out there that allows you to combine like a robotics technology with augmented reality to overcome a lot of challenges. There's actually an Indian girl uh, who is a founder of a startup based in, in Dallas in the US who has been very successful in that regard. So I think there are definitely a lot of uh, uh, you know, success stories there. Similarly, I think there is a lot of work going on around uh, 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 cognitive uh, uh, challenges of different kinds. It need not be always because you're young, but also as you age. Uh, there again, a lot of innovation going on. But sir, how economical these applications will be for the common man to use? I personally think that that is where India can play an amazing role and it is doing it already, right? In that, uh, what we call disruptive innovation, right? Where when someone builds a product that costs or they charge you $100,000, uh, uh, we are able to come in with a solution for $5, right? Uh, that will say, solve the same problem. Now, of course, there are some barriers, as you know, uh, when you use infrastructure, um, there are costs associated with that. But I think uh, we have always proven to be successful in, in disruptive innovation. So I am very, uh, very, I, I, I bet that uh, that will happen here also. Yeah, okay, so yeah. How about quasi AI to avoid accidents on roads rather than driverless cars? <laughs> uh, I think both will happen, isn't it? Um, but, you know, I remember when, uh, I think it was in 1991, we had an AI conference where they had a special uh, uh, committee I, I was asked to join. And that was, at that time, they were talking about intelligent vehicles and roads, because then the idea was to make the roads intelligent, right? Uh, by putting a whole bunch of sensors and you know, using that as a way uh, to provide intelligence to their vehicles. But now I think you know, there is a lot more focus on the autonomous driving and the vehicle itself, right? But I think eventually, I think probably the success would be a combination of both, which will then mean that 
uh, yeah, I'm having a, a driverless car, but even that needs to be safe, right? Or uh, I'm, I'm still driving, but I'm assisted uh, because there are spots, whether it is a blind spot or other situations where if I'm able to get that split, split second early warning, that will help me, right? So. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, can you also mention some of the disadvantages of AI in trading markets, uh, of using them in trading markets? Well, I think any technology, you, you got to be very prudent when you use it, right? Uh, I know that, like, again, back in the 90s, uh, I had an AI startup company. We had around 100 clients then, and there were many who were actually uh, in the financial sector uh, using it in trading, Right. But then the success stories will never be <laughs> will be shared, right? Because they're all making money, and they don't want you know if everybody uses the same technology, then they won't make, get to make money, right? So, but I think um, so. I think that there is always the thing about like you know the downside being if you kind of work the system or you know do the illegal things, right? Uh, there is always a danger. But that thing I think applies to any technology, really. So is there something AI specific that I will be worried about? Uh, no. Now, again, remember uh, the AI ethics, uh, diversity, you know, uh, making sure that the system is not discriminating. Those are all topics of importance that people are already adopting, right? And many of it is really driven by availability of data and, and building the right algorithms. So that is what I would think. Yeah, that was a great discussion, sir. So I think I've uh, covered all the questions which are in the chat box. It was really enlightening uh, talk by you. Uh, so thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So now I invite Mr. A. Suhair for word of thanks. I hope I am audible. Uh, yes. yes. It's time for uh, what a formal word of thanks. And uh, I'm really happy to do it. Good day to all. The Indus Society webinar talks held on every Wednesday under the ages of IEEE Kerala, IE Kerala, ISOC, CSI, PMI, Wakamole Foundation Trust, IEEE EMBS, and LMAC have been expanding the frontiers of our knowledge and understanding. We have a global audience waiting to get charged with new ideas every week. I think the success of this program is the spirit of the participants who register in large numbers from several countries and try to attend it as, as much as possible. We are truly indebted to all of you for this support and goodwill. Eji Harindalal, who is uh, brilliantly coordinating this program, picks up the best speakers and topics of contemporary importance. It's not an easy job. Thanks to him for his perseverance and commitment. Today's topic covers two domain, artificial intelligence and the startups, which are really the buzzwords of today. The speaker of the day, Anthony Satidas, is undoubtedly a doyen in this area. He has given a brilliant treatise on the subject with beautiful illustrative diagrams and explanations. The presentations were really charming. I was very much impressed just to look at this. Is, uh, any technical uh, presentation supported by an elegant uh, slide you know, is captivating. Really great, really great. AI, robotics, IoT, big data, 5G, blockchain, etc., transforming the world making it really very smart. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with the latest in the subject. In appreciation of uh, your beautiful presentation, we present you Memento. Kindly accept this. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We have a brilliant team supporting this uh, event, MC Elizabeth George. Ajina Karim couldn't participate, I believe. And Shanti Ravindran had brilliantly introduced the speaker. 
and we see a lineup of great speakers from 84 CT, 84 batch, starting with the Son. And we had seen uh, Naya from Sial, uh, Shanti Ravindran from Motorola, Lalit Dambika of ISRO, and now Anthony Satiraj. You are really, you make us really proud of your achievements in different spheres. Thank you very much. So, thanking all of you once again for participating and making this event successful. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Next weekly webinar series uh, will be on Managing Energy and Environment Transition by Mr. A.M. Narayanan, Energy Professional. It will be held on 24th March from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you all for today. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Hey, thank, you. Yeah. thank you, Shanti, S.E.K. Nair, for your presence. Thank you, Suhail. Thank you, Harindra sir. See you next week. Good night to all.